Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and whoop whoop, it's Brick Hall O'Clock. I was kind of singing to myself uh, in anticipation of opening this package, not because it's that crazy exciting, but just because I was sort of thinking maybe I need to get on with doing some sort of a theme tune for my Brick Halls. <laughs> I'm doing one every week, it just seems like we need to have some sort of song. But unfortunately, I'm not very musically gifted or anything like that. So um, any song I came up with, I'd probably have to sing myself. And you probably don't want that. Uh, so maybe we'll do without a theme song. And if I have any talented uh, subscribers who want to create some sort of jingle for the beginning of a brick hall, that might be quite fun. Uh, I'm literally riffing this off the cuff. So maybe that's a really bad idea. I don't really know. Anyway, here is a lovely brick hall order. All new pieces. You'll be very glad to hear, or at least I am, because I don't have to wash them. Uh, so we won't be doing the washing scene that I keep planning to do as part of one of these hauls as part of today's video. Um, but before we dive right into it, I just want to go into why I made this particular order, because usually there's one driving force for it. Uh, and this time it was for my train engine shed, uh, which is based on the set 10027. Uh, I did that probably a few weeks back now, almost a month. Uh, and on all the comments that I received back from that, there were loads of uh, ideas about how I could take it up to the next level. Uh, and they did inspire me, as is often the case. And that's why I really like running this channel, just because I get so much feedback. It sort of lifts me to higher uh, sort of levels than I would have been perhaps on my own. Um, and the main toss up that we were talking about in that uh, build was whether to have it closed walled or open ward, and at the moment we've got one side completely open uh, in towards the city side uh, and closed to the harbour side. And some people thought I should brick it in, and that's why I started buying parts for. But then I had a brainwave, and I've come up with a brilliant plan, which I'm not going to tell you in full today, because it will have its own video, obviously, when it comes. But one of the really significant parts that I needed uh, was more roofing. So you will know that from this video. Uh, and here is that roofing. Uh, quite specifically, it has to be these parts, these wonderful six by eight slopes, which I'm told, according to the cat uh, catalogue on Bricklink, is 10 degrees. So that's a 10 degree slope. Looks about right, doesn't it, for 10 degrees. Uh, and I needed eight of these. So hopefully we've got eight in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that's right, I had one. Yes, I had one already, so I only needed seven. Good thing I remembered that or I'll be having a bit of a panic now. Uh, so these are for that build and I hope to take that not just up to the next level but beyond that to about two levels at least higher because <laughs> I think it will look really good. I'm really happy with the development uh, on uh, LDD, Lego Digital Designer. So those are probably the most important part of this order uh, but then, as usual, I start filling my boots with absolutely everything else that that vendor has that I can make use of. Now, it is worth mentioning that when you do look for a part like this, um, to tr you know, you try and find one vendor who's got all that you need. So in this case, I needed a vendor with seven of these, and there were very few vendors that actually had the full amount of seven. So when I'm searching for a part such as this, which is part 4515, I look not only for the ones with no sticker on, in this case, they're actually new, um, but used or new. And I look at all the ones that are similar, that in this color, that also have stickers on, because that's easily fixed. You just pull the sticker off and then you've got the piece that you needed. So when I search for a vendor for these pieces, I make a little temporary wanted list of these and all the other ones the variants on this uh, so I can search for anyone who's got seven or more in this case of any one of those parts in any combination to find probably just a handful of buyers in this in this specific case um, uh, to get the one then that has the best load of other stuff because I was very happy with this order not only because I got the seven pieces that I needed but because this vendor had that loads of really cool stuff so I'm really quite excited about what we're about to open so one of the things was a couple of sticker sheets so hopefully there's two in here but the first one you can see straight away is from that Nintendo Entertainment System from last year 2020 and that's set number 71374 and, well, I'm probably not going to use the one that went on the back of the uh, TV, as that said. But the main thing is this. 
this rather large one that went on the cartridge for the game, uh, being for Super Mario Brothers, which I played on the Super Nintendo rather than Nintendo uh, Entertainment System when I was younger. So that's the SNES rather than the NES. Uh, but it was the, well, actually it was a miles better game, the Super Mario Brothers on the SNES. But nonetheless, it was the same sort of game uh, and is uh, very close to my heart. So I really like that. So I figured I would push the boat out because it was £4 for this sticker sheet. Ouch. Uh, so I'm going to make a billboard or some sort of advert. Maybe I can put it on the side of a computer game store or something like that. I mean, I already have got a store with a TV sign uh, that sells computer games where we're having that sort of premiere of the brand new game with the, um, uh, the what is it, the alien cyborg minifigure that's sort of featuring on the tile of a computer game. So uh, maybe I'll have a second uh, computer store. But even if that's somewhere else on the city and one of the blank walls that I like to fill up, then I think that'll look really good. Uh, and depending on what piece I put it on, because I'm not making that cartridge after all, uh, I might be able to incorporate these sort of two uh, computer game logos as well, though that will require me to cut up the sticker uh, unless I have it sort of portrait like it is on this sticker sheet. I don't know. I mean, maybe even... Yeah, I mean, maybe even another one of those would work, actually. It will be angled then by 10 degrees. <laughs> but uh, if it was sort of on a wall that way, facing slightly more towards the street and away from a railway line or something, that could work rather well, couldn't it? So maybe I need to put one of those straight back on the wanted list. But anyway, that's a really nice sticker, so I'm glad to have that. And And I did like that set. It's just not the sort of set that I would ever buy because, well, what am I going to do with it? Because you'll know that I try and incorporate as many different themes and lines and all the rest of it into my city as absolutely possible, and loads of little side builds and all sorts wherever I can, just to make my city as diverse as possible. But I don't think an absolutely giant-scale Nintendo Entertainment System would fit well in my city, uh, and I really don't want it in my lounge. Or, well, more pointedly, uh, I don't think Mrs. Hood wants uh, Lego and <laughs> Nintendo Entertainment Systems in our lounge. <laughs> anyway, the other sticker sheet was much cheaper, thankfully, at 80 pence. And this is from one of the brand new city sets, 60291 Family House. Uh, and that's quite a nice set, actually. It's not what I'm planning to buy because it's uh, it's a bit facade. It's very sort of narrow as a as a house, and I don't really go for residential uh, too much, to be honest. Uh, the car's a bit odd for my liking. Uh, and the best thing of that entire set, which is quite expensive for the size of it, if you ask me, £45, €50, Euros, $60. Dollars. Um, the best part of that for me is the yellow Labrador. Uh, and I know I've got that waiting in another uh, box because I've done a bricks and pieces order which has arrived so that'll be coming up in uh, on a Wednesday soon um, but what I really like about this sticker sheet is well this huge one which is somebody playing a computer game on a big tv and maybe that could go in a dedicated computer games shop or maybe it could be a really big screened um, arcade game in uh, an expanded arcade either way I think that's rather fantastic obviously it's got the lives at the top and the uh, score so it's kind of like a platform game with a ninja on. Obviously, that's Ninjago theme. So that's really good. The Octan E, sort of electric sign. We're getting a lot more electric cars in um, Lego City. So I think that is very welcome as well. And then I really like this kind of poster. I mean, it, it sort of shouts Dungeons and Dragons to me a bit with the sort of dice uh, above the dragon with his flames and stuff. But it really could be for a rock band or something like that. Uh, and then these two I might be able to use as well. So I think that is a really good sticker. And for 80 pence, I mean, it's an absolute bargain. Now, not only did they have really good sticker sheets and the wonderful slopes that I wanted, but they also had loads of build a minifigure wall uh, type pieces. And I absolutely love these because I don't get to go to a Lego store very often. Uh, so when I find them and they're unique and they're absolutely amazing, I really want to get in there and get them as much as I can. And check out that for a prime example. It's a duck rubber ring, but it's in the coral color with a turquoise beak. Now I've had this piece several times in uh, things like the Vacation Joker, uh, and the Vacation Batman from the Lego Batman movie. We've also had the sort of more standard yellow one as part of the Stud Muffin uh, display frame, which is 5005359. Oh, spit that out. 
Uh, but this is a fourth colour. Uh, and I've got these both on my beach and more uh, located around my marina where I've got the uh, surf shop, which has got a few of these for sale. So whether I add this around a person, or I could even have it in my undersea <laughs> scene as some sort of pollution or something like that. But I mean, that is just brilliant. Uh, and I didn't know that existed until I saw it in this store and nearly fell off my chair. <laughs> thinking, right, well, that's sorted it. You know, you've got four shops that have got the slopes you need, and then one of them is selling this. Uh, yep, I've chosen the store I'm buying from. So, yeah, that is absolutely epic. Uh, really like that. Uh, and there are a few more pieces from the Build a Minifigure wall. Now, this one, oh, I can't use these tiny bags again, so I might as well rip it off. Um, now, this piece is a torso that you might recognize and you'll think that comes from the uh, flower pot girl um, but it doesn't actually because that was actually in bright green and I can prove that by showing my flower pot girl there so the torso is in bright green and you think oh well all right so it's a slightly different shade of green but the same print so far so not very exciting uh, but then also we've got the headpiece in a different color as well which is this really nice blue which is actually bright light blue. So there we go. So I can make a friend for my, probably a male friend given it's blue and this one's pink uh, for my series 18 flower pot girl and have kind of a flower pot boy, I reckon. So uh, I've actually brought from my collection some brown trousers to match hers. I haven't got another flower pot. Uh, so I don't know if I'd want to get another one of those because I might take her out of it and use that for some sort of plant build. Um, but then I just need a head. So I'm just going to grab a head from elsewhere in my order. Uh, and this one is probably the only male head I've got in this order, actually. It's an Emmett head. So you'll recognize that smile and that worried expression as well. And that's from absolutely loads of sets, Emmett, isn't it? Uh, like 30529, building Emmett polybag, which is a really nice one. So I'm going to use that head to make up this guy. And these pieces are all new in this order, so I can mix them all up with ones that I already own and be fine. So look at that. They make a wonderful couple. Oh, yes. So that was worth buying. And that's interesting. He's actually got yellow hands on this one rather than the um, lime hands. I could change that over if I want to. Don't know. Anyway, yeah. I think that's really nice as well. So uh, maybe I'm kind of sad in the fact that that kind of excites me to get existing parts in different colors, but um, you know, hey ho, <laughs> each to their own. Uh, so while I'm doing heads, I may as well open some more of these. These tiny bags I just find so unuseful for reusing. That's why I'm tearing them. The uh, bigger ones I try and reuse, but uh, anyway. Now, I always find that female heads are fewer and further between the male ones. These ones are actually the same, but two sides. Uh, and I like this one because she looks panicked and there's actually a good expression because not only do we get fewer female heads, we seem to get them all just doing a really normal sort of smiley expression. And we don't have very many angry women or anything like that, uh, which I think is a bit of a shame, really. I don't know why that is either. Um... And so here's another double-sided female head with sort of wry smile on one side, which is quite nice. And then the other side is this real sort of sweating, very unhappy, kind of unwell face. So maybe that could be on a fairground ride. And that is two sides of the same thing. Uh, and indeed, that person was quite unwell usually. This, this started out in all the jungle sets that were released in 2017, uh, like 60159, Jungle Half Track, uh, and all the people in that were getting, I don't know, grabbed by carnivorous plants or attacked by wild animals or or nasty huge insects or something like that. But uh, I think those expressions will go really well in my city. So very happy to have those. Right, uh, then on to more normal stuff. This is a torso from that family house set. It's just one I don't have, so I picked it up. I was going to get it on um, a bricks and pieces order. It's just a sort of female torso but it's in this nice uh, bright orange color. So I like that. What else we got? Green, one by one by, uh, green? Going colorblind, they're brown, aren't they? Um, <laughs> God, I can't get in there at all without ripping it. Brown uh, fence posts essentially for my farm. And that's if I extend that fence uh, into brown fencing. 
I had a brilliant idea from a few people, which was to have the, well, I said that I was going to use white fencing for the remainder of that fence, perhaps uh, just out of necessity. But they said I could have half white, half brown uh, and have somebody whitewashing it or painting it white halfway through the job. And I think that's a great idea. So I think I might well be doing that in due course. Here are some blue bracket pieces. I've got these in loads of colours, but not blue. And I need them for a ride that I'm designing, or rather that I'm amending, really. So that's a future ride to come. And I think I've got other parts for that, being these Technic bricks with the X on for in red and yellow. Because you kind of need bright colours for rides, I think. And so some of them aren't colours to my taste, especially when the... Uh, ride has come from a friend's set because <laughs> it's all lilacs isn't it lilacs and purples and i prefer perhaps the more boy colors of blue red and yellow anyway so that's them i'm still getting loads of parts for the side build from a huge set uh, which is an ultra agents one the mission hq 70165 i don't want to build that set i just want to build the mech that is for terabyte who's one of the baddies in that set so i need some of these for all the joints of that mech. I need these for the claws of it. I think I'm getting pretty close to actually being able to build that. It saves you a lot of money if you just want the side build to just get the individual parts you need. Ah, and that was one of the harder parts to get, was two of these sort of bendy tubes. These are really good. Uh, they go in every direction, of course, so they're really nice, good fun. And I need those for that mech as well. Any more mech parts? I think these might have been mech parts. These round tiles with a hole in. Add those to the heap. Uh, looking around, I think... Oh, no, there's one more. That, that might be a mech part. I think that's for his gun, which is just one of those things that people often use as traffic light heads or something like that. Or It was an old robot body in my mind from old classic space, but anyway, in grey as part of a gun. He's got some sort of a ray gun there. I don't know really the backstory to all of that. Ah, now this is interesting. Loads of clear um, cylinder pieces. And there's five of them in here, if I can get them out. And these are going to help be the new support for my UFO over the farm. So I figured if I made, or I figured, somebody suggested actually, uh, I'll give them all their bedoings when I actually put them in place. But um, Somebody suggested that that would be a stronger support to hold up the uh, uh, UFO uh, and would be a bit less visible. And then when it gets to the bit of the ray that's pulling up the farmer, then I can change the colour from clear to um, the, what would it be, uh, trans neon green, wouldn't it? So that may well work. If not, I can probably find another use for these as shop windows or something in the future. But that's a good idea. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, these are for the uh, mech as well. More joints. I don't have any of these in my collection, so when it says I need something that's like that, uh, then I definitely have to buy it. I mean, whatever that's called, I've got no idea. It's one of those. <laughs> uh, oh, now, this is interesting. This is a panel piece with a difference. It's very, very wavy and bendy. So that's it in profile. Very nice. Very nice in purple, uh, and it's actually unique in this colour. It's uh, from set 41161, Aladdin and Jasmine's Palace Adventures, which sounds a bit saucy, actually, and that's from 2019. Now, in that set, uh, this actually represents a flying carpet, and you can see why. I mean, it's absolutely perfect for that job, uh, and that has been uh, a long uh, admired side build <laughs> for my city, uh, so much so that in past hauls, I've actually bought the sticker sheet from that set, and there's the all-important glittery one for the surface of the magic carpet. Uh, and then I've also been collecting all of the gold tassels that go on the four corners of it, uh, and a plate as well in purple, to make the build complete. So I'm going to, uh, at the end of this haul, build up my own special magic carpet so I can make a fun scene around Brick Nottingham. So yeah, that has been a long-coveted piece. And uh, I don't know exactly how to use that. I may well use the Series 6 Genie or this one, the Series 12 Genie Girl around that. I like both of those because they've got the sort of lamp that they come out of. Uh, so maybe somebody will have just wished for one 
uh, and they'll be about to sort of set off on an adventure or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's all stuff out of my collection. But nonetheless, that is the final vital piece to that scene. I think that would be really good. Uh, some green cones and trans... What is that? Trans bright green? No, I think that's trans neon green. There for the uh, mech as well, actually. Missed those, so I must be very close to getting there. A round plate in medium azure. I think that's from my under the sea setting. Uh, I must have had some cheap plates. I've got some in uh, two by threes in grey. I've got the... Uh, Ones which I never know if they're modified tiles or modified plates, really, because they're uh, tile and plate. <laughs> but anyway, those ones in the 1x4. Some 1x2s in grey, dark grey. 1x1s in red. Not so exciting, these ones, perhaps. Oh, stuck on the plastic. But these little pieces are just as vital as the big ones in many respects because they do hold everything together and make it look so special. I've got three slopes in green, which will be for my fairground because uh, we've got things at different levels, so I need to kind of put these at the joins of the different levels. I've got the window level, of course, the main sort of level of the fairground, and then I'm actually probably going to be using that spare tabletop underneath my... Uh, uh, roller coaster just because it's going to take a ridiculous amount of parts to hold up so I think I'm actually going to have about three levels but you know that's all good actually it'll be a bit more effort from from my perspective but I think the result will be worth it just because we'll have a even more dynamic uh, area uh, and then talking of the fairground I've got absolutely loads of bright green plates because as we've established, I need absolutely loads of those and the more sort of different sized ones I get the more versatile uh, I'll be in building around things. So I've got lots of these 4 by 4s Because I'm using bright green, they don't actually have all of the different shapes of plates. For example, I don't think they have 2 by 3s in bright green, for example. They do have 2 by 4s and 1 by 4s but... Uh, well, here's some 2 by 4s um, But, you know, they don't have everything. So it's not that you can build any old shape you want. So I'm going to have to have something sort of tucking under other things and stuff like that, which is what I've done around the edge of my carousel. Uh, you know, so you can just use any old shape plate and as long as they're tucking under uh, and there's no gap, then you're all right. Uh, and then to cover some other awkward areas, I thought I'd get some of these kind of half circle ones, eight by four, uh, and they might cover up a sort of gap that I can't cover up in other ways. Uh, and having a bit of extra texture won't hurt at all. And maybe these could be part of the edge of kind of a, uh, a water feature or lake or pond or something that I might have over there as well. If you get a combination of these, I don't know. Because um, that's been in quite a few of the ideas that I had uh, recently from the carousel video as well. Some dark green plates, one by fours and one by sixes. I think they might be for my secret build, which I've built up far too much. I've got about 10 secret builds, but this one I just kind of started off in Brick Hall talking about it and I've probably gone far too far with it now. And these are for it as well, I think. Dark red. Um, am I going to have to get that out? How did he get those in? Right, that bag's getting torn. <laughs> I can't get it out. <laughs> there we go, two of those. Uh, oh, I'm so tempted to tell you, but I'm not going to. Then some 1x4s. You really could have skipped the mid middle of this video, couldn't you? Ah, now here's something interesting. Two more wonderful pieces. Now these are from the 123 Sesame Street set, number 21324. And I got these before, but here are two more. At great expense, more goldfishes in bowls, which I'm going to add one of those um, round modified plates or tiles, depending on how you look at it, onto the top and make them into uh, goldfish in a bag as prizes for carnival games in the fairground so I think I got three before so now I've got five in total which could well be enough and I just think they're lovely and I got lots of feedback from all around the world of people remembering either recently or in their childhood getting a goldfish in a bag so I think that's uh, still something that is current uh, even in our more enlightened world nowadays so I'm happy to include that in Brick Nottingham
And some stories were about them lasting for ridiculous lengths of time after being a uh, one, you know, sort of like, oh, we still got ours after 15 years or something. You're like, wow, really? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> uh, and here's a record piece. Got this the other hall. Uh, but here's another one because I wanted to do a double-sided sign with a vinyl record on it. And that's from the uh, Lego Movie 2 series minifigure, Hula Lula. Uh, and a couple of sets as well. But yeah, it's really nice, that. Really nice print. I can use that absolutely anywhere because uh, vinyl is going to be quite uh, booming in Brick Nottingham, I think. Then I've got six, is it? Yeah of these little wand pieces that I can either use as prizes on my fairground for little girls who want a fairy wand when they've uh, won something, perhaps instead of a goldfish, uh, which might be more of a boy thing, I don't know. It's probably for everyone goldfish, isn't it? But these would definitely be for uh, little fairy princesses in the making. Uh, or I could use these under the sea, if not. Yeah, so I really like those. So whenever I see these, I'm kind of collecting them at the moment. If I see them sort of for uh, uh, a few pennies, uh, if they're tempe or something, then forget it. Oh, one single tile in sand green. This is for a subway entrance. It's the last piece I need. I'm doing a special subway entrance for my mini scene. You're going to have to be patient, though. I know I get a lot of questions about when I'm going to incorporate them. Uh, it's because it's going in a whole area that I haven't really started yet, which is kind of, well, on that blank table that nothing's on that's going to have the mine on. It's going to have the mini scene on. Because I, I don't want all of my subway scenes being together. I want them spread out. So I'm going to have the subway entrance there as well. These are quite big um, plant pieces. And they're actually in bright green. So they're a bit different as well. They're quite old. Uh, they're probably with a Belleville or something like that type uh, history. Or maybe um, Fabuland or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but they're nice. Just a different shape. Probably for under the sea. It could go anywhere really. Hey, my favourite type of 1x4 tile with the yellow and black stripes, which will go all over my monorail. I still need quite a few of these just to finish off my monorail, because uh, I use them on the sides to hold together the pieces of track. You, you were supposed to use one by fours uh, back in the day. Uh, well, you know, proper one by four uh, in old gray, but I much prefer these because they kind of double, uh, double action in the fact that they look like uh, sort of watch your head stripes or just caution stripes. So yeah, uh, more of those, please, for the uh, monorail. And then final bag. Absolutely chock full of lovely white birds. So we talked last time about the uh, need for diversity from Lego for birds. So if you are listening, anyone who works at Lego, please make us more patterned birds of this type. Some robins, blackbirds, all sorts. I mean, you could really just do about 20 different ones. It'd be absolutely lovely to see. Uh, you could even do them in blind bags <laughs> but yeah so I'll just pour them all there but they are absolutely lovely uh, because I want really large flocks of these in trees and things like that uh, and with this great big batch which is about 12 or so what's that three six three six, 13 Ooh, I'm lucky for some uh, that might well be enough but you know me I'll probably buy more cool well that's a pretty good haul uh, right, I'd better build up my uh, flying carpet and put the sticker on and we'll see how that looks. Well, it's a very simple build, but a very effective one. I mean, if you saw that flying around, you're not going to ask twice what it is. Uh, and I think it's very bright and colourful with that glittery sticker on, but not too much because uh, <laughs> I don't want to get too Disney and frenzy in my city. Uh, but I really like these tassels as well. I don't think I've got those uh, unless they're part of my Chinese restaurant, actually thinking about it. Uh, but yeah, I really like that. So uh, that's what little Robin wished for and that's what he got granted. So I'm really happy to have that as well. Uh, but this was a fantastic order. Very happy with it indeed. Obviously, it was very clean, incredibly well packaged. Uh, the main thing being these slopes, which were vital for one of our upcoming mock builds. Um, but then it's, it's all the extra stuff that does it for me. We've got two wonderful sticker sheets, loads of birds, loads of tiles, loads of build a minifigure wall pieces, which I'm very happy indeed with. <laughs> Most importantly, this one. I mean, that is just worth an individual order all on its own. So I may be looking out for similar parts like that uh, in the future because, well, unless you look, you aren't going to find. Uh, these heads are really good, actually. Nice female heads uh, and loads of parts for existing projects. 
So yeah, all in all, a fantastic haul. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out all of the links in the description below. It really does make a great deal of difference. Uh, so on Friday, uh, I think we'll be doing uh, another fairground update. Uh, and I think what I'll be doing, uh, I won't tell you exactly now, but I think it'll answer quite a few questions that keep popping up from week to week. Uh, and then on Monday, we'll do another mock build. I think we're fast making them mock Mondays while we're doing uh, fairground Fridays. Uh, and I could do the shed. Uh, I'll have to see how much time I've got because that's quite a big one and I'll also have to check if I've got all the pieces I need actually because I may still have a few uh, in boxes waiting to be opened on a Wednesday. Uh, but I'm sure whatever we get up to, it'll be great fun uh, and I look forward to seeing you there. See you!